thanks for coming and uh, I'm really so amazed to see so many people coming to to the to see what the Angular is all about and I'm I'm really sorry for not speaking in French uh, but I guess your English is far better than my French so uh, uh, I understand some French, so I mean, if you prefer to ask questions in French, I will try to do my best to understand. So thanks for having me here, um, and thanks for all the sponsors for organizing uh, this event. So before we start about Angular, just so you know me, um, so my name is Paweł Kozłowski, and I'm, uh, I would kind of put a label on me being like open source hacker, in the sense that I really I really love open source. I mean, uh, both uh, on the uh, software writing uh, level and also on the human interaction level. There's so much energy in the open source. So every time I, I, I like certain piece of software, I'm trying to get involved in the community and, and give back a bit uh, what I'm receiving from all the great developers. And this is how my my journey with the Angular GS started. So I <coughs> I was looking for a library for myself. Um, one of those, the MVC or MVV or whatever frameworks in a browser. And I was evaluating the usual bunch uh, that was available on the market. Uh, and Angular kind of from the very beginning made sense to me. I mean, th th there was something in this framework mm, that was striking me, it, its simplicity. It, it kind of really from the very beginning made sense. Uh, so this is how I, I started to dig deeper into it and the, uh, got involved in the community. And at one point, I got a proposal to write a book about it, so it's it's now available. And this is in turn how I got the in contact with the with the core development team uh, at Angular. And the I'm now part of the Angular team, trying to help with the, the development uh, of Angular JS. And also, I'm a person behind the uh, Angular UI and mostly Bootstrap components. So, um, trying to to get some software written. Uh, so, I think the since it's introductory talk, I, I probably I'm not going to dive into the details of AngularJS, how it works behind the scene, or uh, but I, what I would like to do here is to encourage you to try it out and the uh, and and try it for two reasons. First is that it really tries to make uh, a browser a better place for us as web developers. I mean. We we managed to write like really wonderful software, but the the, the browser is sometimes really painful, uh, sometimes really painful place to be in. So Angular tries to uh, solve this problem. And another thing about it is that it it is really different. It it's really different uh, compared to the uh, uh, approaches that we had before, and the approaches that that exist on the market. So I'll try to show how it's different compared to other. So, like basic, uh, <coughs> basic facts about Angular JS, uh, it, it it seems to be like a new kit on the block. I mean, uh, everyone says, "Okay, Angular is a new framework. It's it's getting popular, and it's great that it's getting popular." But it, it kind of didn't came out of nowhere. It was in the active development for more than four years, and I think it's only recently kind of started to get get popular. So, so, so it's not like it, it's new in terms of popularity, but in terms of code, it's not uh, so new. It's an open source project started by Google, but it's very open. Uh, probably if you go to GitHub and see the uh, number of pull requests uh, that are contributed by the community, <coughs> uh, there's, the, there's the huge contribution from, the, uh, from outside of Google. So we are saying, okay, like the Angular JS tries to make a browser, a better development platform, but what, what it means in practice, right? I mean, and, and it's like really funny story about the web development because in the last uh, uh, I don't know ten or fifteen years we moved uh, we did an enormous lap in in terms of the applications that we are able to deploy on the uh, in a browser like you you can see the screenshot of the it's I think it was one of the most popular travelers magazine in 1993 or 1996 I don't remember exactly but this is how the web looked like right I mean ten years ago it was like the static. Uh, interlinked pages and, and so on, and then we like <coughs> jump to to writing full blown applications here. This is the uh, screenshot from the uh, Google Docs. So I mean, if you compare the two, the, there's just like I mean this huge, 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 uh, huge difference. And 
while it's great for, for our users, like the, the, the people who use those web applications, it's not necessarily great for us as web developers, right? Because we've got like so much more uh, to do. And the, the other funny part that happened uh, while this explosion of web application uh, was, uh, was happening is that we move from this beautiful declarative HTML that like, you know, like a five-year-old like, child can understand immediately what it's all about, right? We m want to make something stronger. And we, we, we give uh, simple instructions to a browser, and we let browser to figure out what to do mm, in terms of rendering, right? We, we are giving some hints, but ultimately it's a browser that makes, uh, makes a decision. And then along the, along the way, we move to something like this. Of course, I mean, it's, it's exaggerated, right? It's the uh, hello world in, in JavaScript. Like, nowadays, no one would like, write it like this. But th this is like, even if we use frameworks or use jQuery or something like this, behind the scene, this is what happens, right? Like, the, the browser needs to uh, execute this code. And the <coughs> I don't know if you, I mean, you can probably recognize hello world here because it's written hello world. But it's nothing like this very declarative, uh, very declarative thing. So my mental picture when I think about this, you know, the JavaScript development is just like this. You, we, we need to take on this uh, superhero clothes and then like, okay, say like, okay, I will drink this this enormous amount of coffee today and I will like work on this application. And the and, and it's really amazing what we uh, what we arrived to do. I mean, we we just able to do great uh, <coughs> great applications, but it's painful. But then you say like, okay, why this guy is ranting here? Uh, you know, the web development is good. We've got jQuery, which is, uh, which is the most popular, the library that is deployed over the web. It was around for a few years. We know how to use it. There are patterns, there are books. We can write great applications, and it's true. But when you come to think about it, it's just like jQuery was, was created to solve the problem of the insane DOM API that we've got, right? I mean, it's just like we, we, before we couldn't write in the reliable way uh, cross-browser <coughs> web applications. So jQuery, oh, I think yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. Uh, so I can, <laughs> I can breathe now. Uh, <coughs> so so th th this was it. We, we, we needed something um, to um, make DOM manipulations a bit more Normal, right? But but th this this is something that should have been done in a browser. I mean, we should have like a normal API from the very beginning. It it it, it was solved by the library, but th it is just like masking um, uh, masking the problem in a in a browser's API. Uh, and and uh, the the other thing that the jQuery did it it really is so much DOM focused, right? I mean, it, it tells you like uh, we've got those gray selectors, so we can grab. DOM element, we can, we've got all those tools that we can manipulate this DOM element. But the, but the programming model didn't change like compared to the uh, raw JavaScript. We, we just like do very low level precise instructions like get this DOM, change this property. If there is this event, uh, grab another DOM element and so on and so forth. So while this, you know, code snippet is better, it's still not perfect. So. So this this is where uh, Angular JS comes, and the it was it it it, it isn't like <coughs> building on top of this jQuery or DOM-minded uh, programming model, but it tries to think like what should we do with a browser so we can actually write uh, web applications and like not don't get insane uh, in the process of doing so. Uh, so this is like really. Uh, Another approach which we want to like rethink how how the browser can uh, can be a better place for us, and the uh, I like also this quote from uh, Igor Minar, which is the like tech lead of the uh, of the Angular project, uh, because like at one point there were there were number of discussions on the uh, on the mailing list on the Google Plus and so on. W what is the pattern behind uh, uh, Angular JS? Is it like MVC or MVVP or like some other? And and then Igor like said like okay I, I declare mm, AngularJS being like model view whatever and uh, you know if, if you need a la label to put on 
top of it, you can put it like you know you can call it MVC or MVP or whatever. But it doesn't doesn't matter. I mean, it's just like so different. You need to try it out to to get a feel of it. So enough of theory, and let's start with uh, examples. So one of the most important uh, things in, in AngularJS is to go back to this very declarative uh, HTML that we had at the beginning and, and, and have like the uh, framework do a bit of heavy lifting for us. So if you see this, you know, like hello world written AngularJS style, which is live here and so on, uh, this is actually the whole code for this mini application, right? So like if you compare it to jQuery, or the uh, it's it's more or less the same amount of code if you compare it to the raw JavaScript it's not at all the same uh, uh, amount of code but but the hello world itself starts to look as it uh, as it looked before only that this time it's dynamic so how this magic happens so what what you will see a lot uh, in AngularJS web applications are those little funny attributes and some custom elements. And in AngularJS world, they are called directives. So what AngularJS does, it's like saying like, let's extend uh, the base HTML language to give some di dynamic behavior uh, to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to the DOM. And uh, what is happening here that we are like bootstrapping an application, this is the whole thing that is needed to bootstrap an application. Uh, we can see a syntax that you could probably recognize from the uh, other frameworks like handlebars or something like this, right? I mean, we can immediately see, immediately see that there is, um, we are outputting a name here. Uh, and the only unfamiliar territory probably is this like fancy ng model thing here. And what it does, it says like, dear AngularJS, whenever anything in the DOM changes, take me the value from the input and put it in the name variable, right? And at the same time, we've got something else. We've got saying like, whenever this variable changes, output me in, in the DOM. So we start to have like a two-way connection. Like every time something interesting changes in the DOM, we can put it. Uh, we can we can take some interesting value uh, from the DOM and put it in a JavaScript variable. And as soon as it's available uh, in JavaScript, we can immediately output it on the screen. And like once again, there is uh, we we don't have to register any DOM listeners here. We don't have to explicitly say, you know, when this thing changed please re-render a template, right? I mean, this is the uh, AngularJS will observe uh, all the model mutations uh, and will do the heavy lifting for us. So it is really one of the, uh, one of the fundamental differences between uh, traditional, uh, the in-client side templates, where we've, we had like a template, we had a set of uh, model values, we've been mixing it together and putting it in a DOM. Uh, and then when we, when we saw that some other variables have changed, we had to repeat the whole process, right? Once again, let's intermingle everything together, let's put it in a DOM. Here it's AngularJS will, will take care of like doing this process uh, constantly. So if you, you will often hear uh, this statement that the AngularJS is declarative while uh, jQuery is imperative. And, and what it means really is that somehow we need to realize that with jQuery we need to enumerate all the little steps that we have to do, right? It is really super explicit. We say like, oh, like when input changes, take the value and, and put it in, the, uh, in some other element. While with AngularJS we just give some hints. Like, okay, when the, uh, and say like, every time there is the change in the input, put it in the model in and then uh, render the model whenever it changes. So what is happening here is that we are 
truncating a lot of, of code that we need to write. I mean, we just simply, uh, well, we don't have to write code. Uh, and this is, this is great because, I mean, this is the work that that, that framework does for us. Um, but it has some other consequences, which the, the probably there are two that should be mentioned. First is that, like, by giving control over the DOM manipulation, we are yeah, we are just simply giving up a bit of control. So we 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 allow AngularJS to do the heavy lifting. We 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 take advantage of the machinery, but we giving up a bit of control. So I mean, you know, if if you like really, if you really want to control your DOM, if you really want to have the uh, every little like attribute change uh, under your uh, under your control, here you 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 need to realize that you are giving up a bit of it. So. Uh, but it has some like positive outcomes. So let's do the scary part, which is a bit of live coding. Uh, so we are going to look into like more uh, complete example, and I'm going to sit down because it will be different to type otherwise. Sorry, I need to take this mic <laughs> because it's <laughs> not super cool to sit on it. Uh, so what we are going to do is to play with the um, a little like Twitter-like uh, example, you know, like a little box with the uh, uh, with the list of tweets that we can do and so on and so forth. And it's maybe not like uh, the most advanced example on on Earth, but this is what we uh, tend to do every day. Like, right? We, we've got a form that uh, that has some moving parts. Uh, we've got a list that we need to fill in and and so on and so forth. So as we said, like the to bootstrap AngularJS application, of course we we need to um, uh, include the library. I'm using the latest version here. So the uh, the what you need to do that that like uh, I included animation support, which we are going to see uh, in a sec. But the the core of the AngularJS library is just one file. Uh, I think it's below 70k uh, minified uh, and gzip. Uh, so, so this is all you need to just include the uh, one one file, and you've got all the AngularJS magic. So after including the file, you just say ng up, and this bootstraps uh, the uh, the Angular machinery. The I'm not going to do going to into the details of AngularJS modules, but uh, in essence, you can uh, declare uh, a module. <coughs> And put some uh, controllers on it and and other stuff which we are going to see. So we started the uh, Angular here. Nothing still happening. Let's make this um, let's make this uh, form live. So there are even in, in the simple form there are like few moving parts. We've got those buttons that needs to get the proper state. They need to get enabled, disabled. We need to see like how many uh, remaining tweets are here and so on. So we saw already the uh, ng model uh, attribute that allows us to do two-way data binding between uh, the uh, content of the DOM and uh, and some and some model. So let's see if it works. So we can see that immediately we've got our form live. So what I'm doing here is that I'm binding the uh, content of the text area to the uh, to the variable, and this variable uh, lives in the uh, AngularJS scope. So scope is basically a map uh, where Angular keeps the data uh, to be exposed to a template. So just like a you know like everything that is on a scope is available to a template. And the, the the other thing that you can probably immediately see when we look at this example, we've got this funny scope. But other than this, uh, we are manipulating uh, raw JavaScript uh, objects. We are dealing with the uh, objects or uh, arrays, but we are not calling any specific APIs uh, to to make the refresh happen. We are can really uh, interact with the uh, normal JavaScript objects. So then 
what happens on this model, we've got a tweets controller. So controller uh, in Angular JS has nothing to do to in control. I mean, nothing to do with controllers uh, in MVC. So it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't control anything, and its probably name is a bit misleading. But the role of the controller is to initialize a scope. So like we, we've we've got this map that is called scope that gets things <coughs> exposed to a template, and controller is there just to do initialization of this map. This is only the, it just doesn't control anything. It it just the uh, initializes things. So what we want to initialize that we've got the uh, this initial tweet. We've got the list of tweets that we are going to uh, that is going to keep uh, all the tweets that we tweet. Uh, and there are some uh, some methods there. Uh, once again, those methods that we've got are pure JavaScript. There is no specific Angular JS APIs to be called. Uh, magic happens without uh, specific calls. So let's use this controller. So we've got methods in the controller. Controller. Uh, so what's going on here? We've got this number here that should show us the uh, remaining tweets, uh, remaining characters. Let's make it live. Pretty simple. Uh, we can mean minus tweet text length. Blah, blah, blah. So what you can see here is that like we we make a piece of screen uh being driven by a model. I mean we we've got one one text that we <coughs> that we keep uh in a variable but we start to drive our other parts of the screen from this model. And 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 this is also um uh, one of the center center things in uh in Angular JS that the the model is the source of truth. I mean we we really did the Angular JS way of thinking. Someone is destroying my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, it's fine. I didn't ask. Is it like too small, too big, or can you see it? Or okay, uh, because otherwise I would be talking to myself. Um, so like the, w we've got this model thing and and, I and it starts to drive other elements uh, of the screen so we've got one source of truth the, the the way of thinking is like let's take the model let's give some hints to angular js in forms of directives and let it do the heavy lifting we we just like don't do any don't manipulation here so what 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 other things are here for example we've got this button uh that should be only enabled when there is a text right there's no point uh uh, enabling it otherwise, so we've got and the another directive called and disabled, and let's say we disable this button if we don't have any uh, text. Right? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ha! I was checking. No, it was real type. So you see, so like. Once again, this tweet, this button, and it disabled. We should disable this one if the length is not uh, not valid. So we've got this method has valid length. But voila. Um, so it's the one of the things that I wanted to to show here is that once again we, we've got this model thing and we drive different uh, elements from the model, uh, but the in jQuery approach, what you would do is like you would have a listener uh, on the the change here, and you would say like every time something changes here, go to this button, change its property, go to this button, change its property, go to this element, change its property, and so on and so forth. So we've got like this one central method that kind of you know like coordinate like all the pieces uh, of the screen. And here we've got like very localized. I mean, if I want to work on this button right now, I'm focusing only uh, on this button and driving it from the model. Uh, so let's make it more lively. 
let's add some tweets so we can use the uh, another directive called ng-click, which is basically every time you click, we call it add method. And this add method is pretty simple. <coughs> you take a existing tweet and you push it in on top of the uh, tweets array. Once again, pure JavaScript, nothing, uh, nothing special here. And nothing happens, right? Because we don't have anything to display. So let's try to display it. Tweets. Well, perfect. So once again, manipulating model is as easy as, as uh, interacting with uh, normal uh, JavaScript objects. So let's let's display the list of tweets. Uh, so we've got this structure, we've got, uh, for each tweet, we've got uh, a lie, and we want to uh, display uh, the content of the list. And it's pretty simple with another directive called ng-repeat, <coughs> which is basically saying take a collection and repeat this DOM element, repeat this li plus each children for each item in a collection. So three, yeah, there is something. <laughs> tweet in tweets. So when we start to, ah, uh, we don't have content yet, but we are going to fix it pretty soon. Tweet text. Come on. Come on. It's live reload that is not always cooperating. Perfect. Uh, so so this is like one of uh, the typical examples that we do. Uh, you know, the list, uh, we can, okay, we can add the delete uh, as well. And you click, you already know this one. You can say remove. Remove this tweet. Oh. Mm. And it works as well. Perfect. So, as you can see, uh, we we given up the uh, the control over DOM here to to Angular JS. We just manipulate the model, and we give some hints in forms of directive, and let Angular JS figure out the things. Now. Once again, the, the control freaks will say like, okay, but it's scary because like I don't know what the machinery is doing. I don't know if it's going to be performant enough. I don't know if it's going to render what I want, uh, and so on and so on. And it's true because we are giving up control. Uh, for the performance, we are probably having had going to have a question about it, so I'm I'm going to say nothing uh, for now. Uh, but <coughs> giving up control to a machinery has some uh, other positive effects. For example, you can uh, declaratively ask the machinery to do more. <coughs> For example, uh, you can make the, uh, the list animated, right? By just adding um, another class uh, on a li element, you the, so what Angular is going to do here is saying like, okay, this is this uh, animate tweets uh, class here, which is nothing more than <coughs> CSS uh, transitions. So, but what Angular just will do is to say like, okay, now I'm adding an item to a list, so I'm going to add appropriate classes at the right time and remove appropriate CSS classes at the right time to make the animations work. And obviously, uh, it is possible to do it in a such a declarative way because we've got the machinery that does the DOM rendering. You could do it by hand, but you have to do it by hand, right? I mean, so this is the... Uh, uh, so what else? Well, I mean, <coughs> let's see a bit of filtering on the list, which should be pretty... Uh, once again, ng model, you know it already. We want to have a search term, and we want to filter the list with the search term. 
and it's pretty easy because we can use something called filter in AngularJS. So this pipe is like filtering, and we are going to say like, you know, like uh, give me the list that only has those search terms inside. So AA, BB, CAC, and then you know you can filter it and so on, and with the animations working. So so it it really. I mean, it doesn't take much code to have a like a, a small mini application that is that is functioning here. Okay, so let's switch back. So I hope that sorry before. So I hope that uh, I managed to convince you that well, at least hope managed to convince you that. Um, with this declarative approach, we can dramatically reduce the, the amount of code uh, that we need to write. And we also take advantage of the machinery to do fancy stuff like animations. And this is, this is part of the AngularJS that uh, people <coughs> see immediately by playing with the, uh, with the examples on the homepage. Like th this is kind of already mind blowing. Okay, I can like, work with the raw JavaScript. I can develop applications pretty quickly. Uh, and it's all uh, good. But the AngularJS has some more uh, hidden treasures, and the, uh, the probably the next big thing that people uh, see is that you can uh, use it built in HTML compiler. We call it HTML compiler. But, but in the essence, you can create your own uh, attributes and your own uh, HTML elements and give them behavior. I hope it's an announcement of the new version of AngularJS because <laughs> <laughs> it gave me time to drink some water. Uh, so, so you saw this uh, built-in um, built uh, directives like ng, ng repeat, ng model, and so on and so forth. But uh, actually, we can uh, create our own uh, elements and give them behavior. And we've got at our disposal the same APIs as the, uh, as the core of the framework. So everything that the, the core developers of the framework can do in terms of uh, special uh, elements, we can do as well. We've got the same API, nothing, we, we don't have like less power. We've got actually uh, the same power. And, and this is absolutely great because uh, we can create our own uh, elements, give them whatever name that we understand and whatever meaning uh, we can uh, put on this element. And we can make it live. We can add new elements. We can even bring back the ones that were removed. I don't suggest that you should do it uh, in terms of blink, but uh, it is uh, possible. So what we can do with those custom elements there, and there are really different uh, categories uh, of those directives that we can and that we can create uh, and there are multiple usages and the, the 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 one pretty obvious is that you can create your own wording you can create your own vocabulary you can you can create your own dictionary on of terms that make sense to you and your application so even for the simple things like uh, bootstrap alerts that you know create HTML like this you can shrink it a little bit. So maybe you are not saving much of HTML here, uh, but at least you are creating your own, your own thing, your own alert. I mean, I know that I've got, I've got an alert. It has a type. I can use it anywhere in the uh, web application. And there are, well, and this, this alert was like pretty simple. We, we defined that there is a bit of behavior here but okay, well, this is not much. Uh, but actually, you can build more uh, complex directives uh, or create like reusable components. And here's the example of uh, pagination that probably we can, uh, that we are going to use in multiple places uh, in uh, web applications. So what we gain by uh, encapsulating this piece 
of HTML into a directive is that, once again, we give it our name, our friendly name. We remove HTML uh, duplication, right? Because like this is, uh, <laughs> this is not a rocket science. I mean, we can do it in the raw uh, <coughs> Angular JS. This is this is pretty simple to do, but uh, even though you have to repeat it all the time, you have to remember to add the uh, appropriate class and so on and so forth. So it's so much more convenient to just say like, okay, here's the pag pagination. This is the uh, the current page on which uh, I want to be. It it has this two-way data binding. So every time the current page changes. Uh, you will have your UI updated, and every <coughs> every time you click on the uh, page number, you, you will have your model updated, and so on and so forth. Uh, but the other funny thing is that you can uh, write those uh, directives or those mini widgets in the exact same way as we written a mini application, which means we can. Uh, I'm going to show you a template for, I mean, code and the template for this uh, directive. If I can find it, the tick 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 widgets. So pagination. So this is the definition of the directive. I don't want to scare you with this because there is a bit of magic, but uh, here the of the magic how we declare directives. But uh, if you scroll down to the uh, to the meat. Of this uh, of this directive to the to the to the core of it, there is not much difference uh, com as compared to the applications that we've been writing. We've got like a scope, we manipulate uh, a model uh, on the scope, and later on we can have a template uh, for this pagination, which once again this is just a encapsulating uh, the the markup. So. And the funny thing we can do is to completely separate the uh, the behavior of this uh, of this directive with the template, and as soon as we do so, we can have a template uh, for Bootstrap CSS. We can have a uh, the uh, template for Foundation uh, CSS, and so on and so forth. So we can really decouple a bit our applications from the low-level HTML and, and, and CSS. And ob obviously, we can uh, go on and, and, and create uh, even more complex uh, uh, directives like this. Uh, you know, this is, once again, ability for us to uh, work on the higher level, like create our own vocabulary, encapsulate it, and, and, uh, and somehow enforce consistency. Because like in, in, the, in the directives like Accordion, there are so many classes that you have to take care of, like the uh, you have to make sure that animations are working and so on and so on. So if you have to repeat it all over the places where you want to have accordion, it's certainly possible. I mean, it, it's not magic. I mean, you, you can do it with the without any directives, but you have to repeat <coughs> yourself, uh, risking uh, all the bad things that happen when we duplicate the code. So we've been through Two-way data binding, the, this like the magic that powers um, AngularJS. We've been through directives that, for me, are the one of the coolest part of the framework. Uh, but the uh, AngularJS, it's not only about the rendering uh, engine; it's really a complete framework. So when you include this AngularJS like 70k file, you are not only getting the the rendering engine, but you are getting a complete framework which is sufficient to write uh, rather complex uh, web applications. And the, uh, you will find uh, in the core of the framework all the uh, libraries, the or like Ajax abstraction, uh, all the utilities, uh, really uh, everything that, uh, uh, that you might need. Uh, and while you dig into these utilities or the way we use them, you're probably going to notice pretty quickly something uh, that is not so common yet in JavaScript, but pretty common in other languages, which is dependency injection. So here there's an example of the 
users controller is like you know kind of abstract we are querying the uh, the the collection of of user through uh, ajax uh, but the interesting part is not the querying uh, but actually how you are getting access to the utilities that you are going to use in your controller so here we are just saying like okay <coughs> in this function i need scope yeah because i need to uh, initialize it i need http i need log and we don't care from where it's coming and it's coming from angular js because it's getting to be uh, injected and Depending on the injection is the pattern that's been around for quite some time, but it has like two pretty powerful consequences. Uh, the first one is that you can uh, easily swap uh, dependencies for your own. So even if like uh, even if uh, AngularJS is coming with his own log implementation, that uh, by default, it's going to log all the me error messages to a console. Uh, you can swap it to something that is going to send errors to, a, to your server, for example. And, uh, and this is pretty much easy uh, when you've got the system like dependency injection. But swapping dependencies come very handy when you need testing uh, your JavaScript code. And the Unit testing is very central thing uh, in AngularJS. Like the, it's not only that the framework is uh, very well tested. I mean, th there are like, um, I think th at this point there are more than two thousand like uh, tests executed for uh, on each build uh, in several browsers. Um, but so so like the the AngularJS developers went into the. Uh, and and made sure that the, the, the framework is stable, that it's well tested. But it's o not only this; it's also uh, making sure that the code that you write against the framework is stable. And and it's really when you see things like HTTP. Obviously, when you are doing unit tests, you want to write them fast, right? I mean, especially if you are doing uh, test-driven development. So if you want to go fast, obviously we don't want to do XHR requests uh, during the unit test. So what we can do with dependency injection is to swap this HTTP thing for, for a mock implementation that doesn't do uh, real XHR request, but instead uh, using mock data or something like this. So those are the things that I would like you to take home from from this uh, presentation. So the, the, the first is like really give AngularJS a try. Uh, if you haven't uh, done so already. <coughs> uh, because it gives you this two-way data binding with automatic refresh, which dramatically reduces uh, the amount of code you write, and at the same time enables things like uh, declarative animation. Th this, this machinery that is doing rendering for you can actually uh, do some cool stuff behind the scene. Then uh, you can create your own directives uh, and by doing so you can create your own vocabulary uh, you can create higher level components uh, and once again like not only write less JavaScript code but also like remove the duplication in HTML uh, but AngularJS it's not only about the rendering engine is the it's really the full uh, framework that you can take advantage of today but you need to be prepared <coughs> that for the thing, for the fact that AngularJS is different, and probably people who who've been hanging around in the AngularJS community seen this picture, so you need to be prepared to go through these phases of, you know, oh, it's cool, versus like, oh my God, it's just like hor how this be so horribly wrong. Uh, and, and it really happens. I mean, it's it just like uh, it happened to me. It happened to many people that I've been speaking to. Uh, so, you know, just be be prepared. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's really a uh, fun piece of technology to work with. And like so many times I, I mean, I've been working with this beast for like almost three years now. And I still got those moments of like, Oh my God, it's so simple. I mean, it's just like really, uh, it's really cool. Uh, 
bits and pieces. Uh, so obviously, AngularJS org with the documentation uh, references to the uh, references to the GitHub project uh, and so on. Uh, I've been using examples from the Angular UI uh, Bootstrap, which is kind of companion UI companion suite uh, for AngularJS. Uh, for learning resources, I can only recommend you my book. Plus, uh, <laughs> no, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, it actually, the uh, there is excellent call uh, site called Egghead.io, uh, which has short videos uh, recorded by John Linquist, which is the uh, absolute master when it comes to comes to WebStorm. Uh, so you can not only learn Angular JS, but actually how proficient one can get with the IDE. It's pretty amazing. And the and as soon as you start, uh, th there is like really great community uh, around uh, Angular JS. I mean, I'm so amazed how how it explodes. For example, uh, on on Stack Overflow, we've got like questions that get answered in a, in a matter of minutes, and uh, it's just pretty crazy. There are, there are also like some folks that are hanging out on the uh, on the ERC channel that they seem to be there like every every time, like you know, like night and day answering the questions before you can ask them and like you know like you finish ask like you don't finish the <laughs> sentence and they've got an answer so just like pretty pretty amazing uh, community behind and this is it what i've prepared we've got still 10 minutes maybe even 12 uh, for the uh, for the questions so i would be happy to answer <laughs> okay, so <laughs> no, it, it's great. <laughs> Intro. No, uh, so it has certain performance characteristics. Like it, f for me, it, I kind of like this topic because like people tend to ask the question like, is it performant? And and this is the the, the questions you, you, you this type of question you you can't like answer. You can say like yes or no. I mean, and and it doesn't mean anything, right? So the you always have to measure and like you know on your browser on your environment on your application and so on and so forth. So th this is the first thing that there's still no absolute performance like holy holy grail mm, then definitely it has certain performance characteristic and it, it's just um the kind of performance sensitive part is this um uh, magic that figures out which uh, which dom elements should be repainted <coughs> and this uh this figuring out magic is directly proportional to the uh, number of bindings or number of like the uh, the moving parts on the on on the screen. So there were some um, to to actually do the evaluation of the all all those bindings or all the model changes. We can actually uh, compare. Uh, quite a significant number of those even on the low end browsers and apparently up to like 2000 like bindings on a page it is not noticeable so like a browser can say like okay i compare this model to that model this <coughs> change this didn't change i need to refine this i need to refine that because this is what we can notice somehow like i I'm, I'm typing in a screen something i'm changing a model value and then angular js needs to figure out which parts of the screen needs to be repainted so we need to compare um, what has changed and what it influenced on the screen. So it has certain performance characteristics, and those performance characteristics are directly linked to the number of bindings here that you've got on a page. So anything below 2,000 should be uh, not noticeable. Then 2,000 seems to be uh, okay. Can we can we spot 2,000 moving parts on a screen, right? I mean, it's so the of official like uh, the message is like uh, the Angular JS works with jQuery. So I mean, you you have to include jQuery before, uh, and then AngularJS will start to use uh, it to do DOM manipulation instead of like built-in jQuery Lite, which is kind of you know like mini mini version of jQuery. So this is what you see in the uh, in the official AngularJS documentation, and it's true. Uh, then I guess you are talking about the widget, so I guess about jQuery UI or like one of the uh, other custom widgets that was written uh, in jQuery that is doing DOM manipulation and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <coughs> so you can make them. So, so yeah. Th this is like the one of the popular questions, I guess, on the Stack Overflow. Like, people say, okay, I've created my DOM elements uh, with those fancy attributes, uh, like you know, ng-click or whatever. I've dumped them in the DOM and it doesn't work. 
so actually, uh, it, it won't work because like Angular just doesn't know anything. They didn't like observe the those DOM elements. So you can, uh, but there is actually a service, built-in service called compile. So you say like, uh, compile me this. Uh, that's why we were talking about the uh, HTML compiler. Just compile me this piece of the DOM, and then I'm going to say, oh, okay, hey, I know, I know wh what it means. But then, uh, really, we need to be careful because, like, um, sometimes those, those jQuery plugins are going to create DOMs, DOM elements when when it's live. So the the wrapping, I mean, the, there are certain things that we need to be aware of uh, while wrapping existing uh, jQuery uh, jQuery plugins. It's certainly possible. Uh, but sometimes it requires a bit, uh, a bit of uh, working on the edges somehow. I mean, we, you know, like uh, if jQuery is creating certain DOM elements, we need to make sure that they are compiled, and they when when it's throwing key events, we need to know that uh, Angular JS is aware of those and so on. So, it is certainly possible to wrap uh, existing jQuery into uh, directives, uh, but it uh, it requires uh, a bit of uh, a bit of work. And, uh, what about the, um, the use of Angular in the, for example, web browser? So it's bad or uh, on the mobile browsers or like the or the. Or so so what is the? <coughs> so I think the the once again official story about the uh, well official and true uh, the story about the browser support is that uh, I was mentioning those like um, te um, tests that are that are run uh, in, in uh, on each uh, check-in and the Angular is continuously tested around like the with the range of like desktop browsers uh, so like everything starting from IE 8 to IE 10 I don't know if the IE 11 is already tested as well uh, so all the most pop um, so I, I'm mentioning IE because uh, I guess this is the, the most sensitive part uh, the all the other modern browsers are also part of the uh, of the continuous test. There are guys working on putting also mobile browsers uh, in a test, like through Sauce Labs. Uh, so, so this is what what is executed on each commit and and like guaranteed that that like you know that the all the tests are passing and the uh, and and nothing is broken. Then for the exotic stuff, I, they were like, I don't know what, what, what's why, but the uh, at one point, AngularJS was really popular on the uh, in kind of embedded devices, like people were doing applications in PlayStation and and, and so on. So yeah, it, it works like pretty well uh, across the range of browsers, but then uh, there are, there are probably there are there are browsers or like the things that, that it can't work, but like I, I I'm not kind of aware of the uh, of the you know specificities of each and every browser. So like the, the the ones that are part of the continuous testing are guaranteed to work more or less. One more question. I think that uh, any link that deals with the kind of vulnerability of the uh, browser endpoints is is that a fault in the way they can install? <laughs> uh, so I mean, uh, no, it's not a direct call to use UI router. Uh, uh, so, so I don't know if everyone heard the question. So the the question was like uh, the in 1.2, uh, you can start to see the trend of breaking up the framework uh, into sub files. So like certain parts are getting extracted. So at the beginning there was like the uh, resource that was extracted, and and the the, the story continues like the routing uh, get uh, extracted from from the core, and and this is. Uh, on one hand, to enable things like UI routers to to coexist peacefully. So I mean, if people are not using the uh, built-in routing, they can just take uh, UI router and like not duplicate the code. But it's ju just the general trend that that is going to continue, like breaking apart the framework and making it uh, more modular, so you can only take uh, pieces uh, the, uh, that that you really need in in, in your application. I don't know if we've got time for one more, but. Uh. <laughs> Whichever, as soon as all the developers agree. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. <laughs>